When a country grows their economy, it's a good thing. It lifts people out of poverty, the middle class also expands, and that ultimately leads to greater consumption. But China's growth today is seen as a big threat to the US, and we have none other than our best friend Janet Yellen confirming this. The US Treasury is telling the world that China's economic growth is dangerous. Yellen wants China's industry ramp up is distorting the world economy. She is scolding China for building up their industries. China's record growth is causing excess capacity to build in the system. And this is starting to distort global prices and production. In other words, the US is angry that China is becoming a high-tech industrial economy. Beijing is cornering the industries of tomorrow. We are talking about solar power and renewable energy amongst them, areas where the Western world is seriously lagging behind. Europe and the US, they are leagues behind China here, which is why Yellen is lashing out. There's no country in the world that subsidizes its preferred or priority industries as heavily as China does. China desires to have global domination of these industries. And this is where we need to call hypocrisy out. Of course, China wants to have global domination of solar power and EVs. It's the same way America wants domination of the global energy market and the financial industry as well. And when it comes to subsidies, the US does this on a massive scale like no other country. A few days ago, Yellen sold a record $66 billion in two-year treasury notes. And this was the highest issuance in history ever. Now, what's interesting is who the buyers were. A whopping 65.8% of sales went to indirect bidders. And these are foreign buyers that plowed their money into US treasuries. When foreigners buy US bonds, they are effectively taking money out of their own capital markets to subsidize the US economy. Yellen is borrowing money to prop up US industries and this debt will eventually be defaulted on through inflation. It's bizarre to see Yellen calling the kettle black when she's essentially the queen of subsidies. When Yellen says there's an overcapacity problem, she's referring to prices in China dropping too fast. Beijing has a ton of industrial capacity. Many companies are building factories to supply everything from EVs to solar panels, and this is freaking the US out. Solar factories in China are operating at as low as 40% of capacity. Profits are dropping and prices for solar wafers have fallen by 75% since August 2022. As consumers, this should be a good thing. It's great if prices fall. China's exporting deflation to the world through lower prices. We can see the price of wafers taking a big nose dive since April last year. It went from 80 cents a piece to just 20 cents. There's a huge collapse in price which is great for consumers. Prices have dropped to the point where factories are operating below capacity. So why is Yellen so angry about this? It's because the West, especially Europe, can't compete with this level of prices. China's overcapacity is a strategy to cement their market share. They know the West can't compete because their cost of production is simply too high. Energy cost in the Eurozone is insane. Labor in the US is very expensive as well. China, on the other hand, can keep producing cheaper solar panels and still make some profit on them. And this is why Janet Yellen is hopping mad. This is the big pivot China is making. Instead of competing in the banking sector or military production, their focus is on the industries of tomorrow. And this is making the US angry because one big market is being lost to China. And we are of course talking about Europe. The EU plans to increase their solar capacity from 263 gigawatts today to 600 by 2030. China currently supplies 95% of Europe's total solar panels which is an incredible market share. It's pure dominance. The US wants Europe reliant on American manufacturing, but it can't be done, especially not in renewable energy. Yellen is watching the US lose the entire solar market to China, and that's why she can't sleep at night. There's a reason why Europe buys their PVs from China. It's not because they like Beijing. It's simply good economics. China's overcapacity is exporting deflation to the EU. This chart shows why decoupling from Chinese solar is impossible. The blue line is Europe's solar module price, the final price of their finished product. The orange line shows the imports of Chinese solar panels. As Europe imports more Chinese solar panels, their total cost of power generation drops dramatically. Cheap solar panels are making it cheaper for Europe to generate solar power. And there are only two ways to beat the Chinese. Either you drop your cost of production dramatically and you eat a big loss, or you start punishing China and you start threatening sanctions. Yellen has made it very clear that China's overcapacity is a big threat to the West. She's angry with China. I'll make sure that they understand the undesirable impact that this is having, flooding the market with cheap goods on the United States, but also in many of our closest allies. And this is crazy. 
we might be on the brink of a new trade war. A new barrage of US sanctions might be coming down on China again. And it's going to go beyond AI chips. It might spread to renewable energy next. And just think back to the sanctions on Russian gas. Who benefited the most from that? It was the US. The exports of LNG flew to the moon. Because Europe was cut away from cheap Russian gas, they needed an alternative. Nord Stream blew up and Europe promised to decouple from Russian energy. So LNG exports from the US flew up in 2022 and 2023. It went from 2 billion cubic feet per day to 7 billion, more than 3 times the amount. And this is LNG being sold at a higher price. Europe simply had very few choices left. It's likely the US wants to replicate this with renewable energy, sanction the hell out of China so that Europe has only one supplier left. They'll be forced to buy from the US and that might be the next trade war coming. China's moving full steam ahead with high-tech manufacturing. It's going to replace their real estate sector and be the main driver of the Chinese economy. Chinese tech is fast catching up with the property sector. Just last year, high-tech manufacturing accounted for 14.3% of GDP. Real estate has dropped from 24% down to 19.4% only. China's pursuing a sustainable growth model. The overcapacity by China is a strategy to grab market share and prepare their industries for the renewable boom. This is where we need to zoom out. After Europe shifts to solar, other places in the world will follow in the decades ahead. Asia and the Middle East will do their pivot. Africa will follow suit as well. China is positioning itself for the next 50 years to capture global demand. And that's why the loan growth of China's industrial sector is flying to the moon. Banks in China are aggressively giving loans to their manufacturing companies to grow operations. In just four years, loan growth went from 5% to nearly 35%. There's a seven-fold increase. Other sectors like real estate and services are no longer the priority for China. Once you realize this, you'll understand why Yellen is losing her mind. Her coming trip to Beijing is to scold China on this. China's a strategic plan, while the US is thinking only tactically. But well, let's talk about Argentina for a bit because things are getting crazier there as well. Javier Millet is still in chainsaw mode and his mission is to save the Argentine economy. The country has a big spending problem, which is draining away their reserves and Millet is about to unleash hell. He's planning the largest mass layoff in Argentine history. Millet is planning to fire 70,000 government workers. He's going to swing the chainsaw down and destroy a ton of jobs. And we know the Argentine government is extremely bloated. There are a lot of excesses there, and to balance the budget, Millet is to stop government spending. This is a dangerous move because the unions are definitely going to push back. Millet's job cuts aren't done in a vacuum. Argentina's economy is already very weak and this move might just topple it over. And to balance the books, Millet has already frozen public works. Contractors who work for the government are now broke. Funding to provincial governments has also been cut off. Over 200,000 social welfare plans have been terminated. So life in Argentina is about to get much harder. Now I have to be clear here, no one is questioning the need to balance the budget. Argentina has to do it for long-term growth. But Millet seems to be speedrunning this like a video game. He is going at warp speed. He has kicked on the hyperdrive. The big risk here is social stability. The country might devolve into chaos before he reaches the finish line. Even before Millet took office, people in Argentina were suffering financially. The poverty rate in Argentina hit 41.7% in the second half of 2023. This was before Millet launched his austerity program. What will happen when Millet cuts away government jobs and social programs? The budget might get balanced, but poverty rates could spike up to new historic highs. That alone can threaten the entire social fabric of Argentina. So he's playing a very dangerous game. And this is the ultimate balancing act. Millet's chainsaw is going to get worse. He's moving to privatize Argentina's state-owned companies. The idea is to cut costs once again to trip away the Fed. Obviously, he can't do it wholesale yet. Congress isn't on board with the idea. But he has found another way to make progress. Millet has cut funding to the state companies. He has fallen to 456 billion pesos, a big decline of 61%. And if the money stops flowing, the companies obviously needs to chase profits. The easiest way to do so is to cut expenses. And the biggest expense of these companies are the employees. And this is an indirect way of forcing change down. For example, Argentina's national airline has a new voluntary retirement program. Millet's management is encouraging 8,000 out of 12,000 employees, roughly two-thirds, to fire themselves to take a golden handshake and retire peacefully. They might get a payout, but if they lose their jobs, it's going to be very hard to find employment in Argentina going forward. Inflation is still a major crisis and the entire economy is weakening. 
Belay is making a big gamble here and I'm not sure if he can succeed without unleashing more chaos. There are big problems facing the Argentine economy and this will introduce a double whammy for people living in a country. It threatens to flip Belay's austerity plans as well. Argentina is likely in a recession. GDP has fallen again by 4.3% in January from a year ago. The economy has contracted over the last two quarters and it might get worse in February as well. Millet's move to cut 70,000 jobs is going to crush GDP figures even more and this is going to drive unemployment up which will create the spending even more. The unemployment rate in Argentina is at 5.7% and this looks very low considering US unemployment is near 4% but that doesn't mean Argentina has a stronger economy than the US. Around 18% of Argentine jobs are from the government and if you throw in the state-funded companies, this could swell above 30%. Millet targeting government jobs is going to collapse the buying power of many people. The only thing worse than inflation is your income dropping to zero. You no longer have any money coming in to even spend anymore. Not even for food and gas, discretionary spending is definitely going to collapse. Inflation is another crisis that's plaguing Argentina's economy. Wages are not going up enough. Because of Millet's currency devaluation, paychecks in both the public and private sectors are collapsing. In the latest report, real wages are collapsing badly. Private sector pay has fallen by 11% after adjusting for inflation. And this is an 11% drop from November to December, one single month. So an item that costs $10 today will be $11 a month later. That's an insane inflation rate that nobody can survive. It's so crazy that Argentinians are moving their money to everything but the peso. They are buying US dollars, they are stacking gold, and they are even rushing for Bitcoin. Bitcoin purchases have reached the highest level in almost two years. Nearly 35,000 transactions were done on Lemon, the crypto exchange in Argentina. And this is wow, the peso is dropping so fast that people on the street are fine with the volatility of Bitcoin. And this is a sign of desperation which doesn't bode well for the economy. As Millet continues slashing jobs and tightening control, we'll see the country slip deeper and deeper into recession. And will they make it to the other side? It really depends if Millet can control the fallout and ramp up the inflow of dollars. He needs to export more stuff. And this is perhaps the only saving grace for Argentina today. Exports in the country are heading up. Beef exports in Argentina have hit the highest levels in 57 years. They have exported over 82,000 tons of beef in February, which is good news for the country. And as a whole, we can see Argentina's exports slowly recovering. He has gone from a low of $5 billion in November to 5.5 billion last month. That's a 10% gain which is better than nothing. At least more dollars are coming into the country. The big challenge for Millet is to keep this up while preventing a social collapse from his austerity measures. As we said before, doing one is tough, but doing both at the same time is extremely difficult. Now you would think that Argentina will work with China to revive their economy faster, but that isn't happening. In fact, they are subtly encouraging companies to decouple. Their foreign minister made a statement that Argentina won't push companies to buy from China. There's little to gain in dealing with countries that aren't liberal democracies. This is an important statement. It tells us that even now, Argentina is moving ever closer to the West and not towards BRICS. They won't join the bloc, at least not during Millet's term. In March last year, Argentina considered buying Chinese fighter jets. But what happened yesterday tells us that Argentina is fully in the camp of the US and France. Denmark is going to sell 24 of their F-16 planes to Argentina for $300 million. This of course comes with the blessings of the US. So battle lines are drawn and Argentina is now fully Team USA. So the economic war isn't going to end. It's getting more complicated and ridiculous at the same time. But let me know what you think. Is Yellen heading to China to give President Xi a scolding? And can Millet revive Argentina's economy in time? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.